All right, so guys, I want to hear what your opinion. What is an MMORPG? What defines it as an MMORPG as opposed to a fantasy RPG? Just a standard role-playing game. What is the difference between the two? I want to hear some of y'all's opinions and I'll get into what I think it is. Because I think that there's there's a bunch of gray area and I'm, I'm just curious to what my community thinks is the difference. Only in the treat version. Gotcha. And I guess the, the second part of that is, in y'all's opinion, is Valheim an MMORPG? Is Outriders an MMORPG? What about Black Desert Online? Is that an MMORPG? And is there a difference between an MMORPG and an MMO? Okay. Morning, Wayward. How are you doing, buddy? We're doing good, Pandora. We're having a discussion that I'm actually really looking forward to here. You know how open world and interactive the open world is. Okay, okay. I can partly agree with that. Okay, okay. So, so far we got, it consists of group makeup and if you have to party up or not have to party up, but if you party up, what that group makeup is gonna look like. We have one saying it's a socialization, socialization, not necessarily the game mechanics. Um, there are massive multiplayer games that aren't RPGs, but most have RPG elements. Okay, I can get behind that. Pandora, how are the kiddos? How are you doing? How'd everything go yesterday that you were trying to get done? Huge open world, but there's not much beyond bosses and the one merchant. Okay. I have not had a good morning, but it's only up from here. It sure is wayward. Just because you haven't had a good morning so far doesn't mean it can't turn into a great day. All right. So. I'm doing awesome, Akano. Appreciate you. It went great yesterday. Good. I'm glad to hear that, Pandora. I don't know what that all means, just how my brain sees the games. I got you, California. Okay. So when I think of an MMORPG, I'm thinking a game that promotes social interaction. That's number one. But it also has to have a couple more key points. So let's 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 do a Devin Nash on this. We're bringing up the notepad so I can keep track of what I'm thinking here. Actually, no, we're going to do this a different way. We're going to use Myro. We're going to put together a mind map <clears throat> and how this works together. Board. Give me just a second here, chat. All right, here we go. So what is an MMO? So in my personal opinion, Socialization. Or it promotes. Whoops. Socialization. Grouping. It sure is, Mad Max. This is not a lecture. This is just a this is a conversation. This is the school class that I always wanted to take. <laughs> All right. Oops. How did I just move that? Chat, how did I, how did I, how did I? Eh. 
Uh huh. Okay. Guru Papa Krund. Yep. Yep. So I think that there's two sides to an MMO. There's the the actual game aspect, and then there's the socialization aspect. So what I want to explore first is the socialization aspect. That's the side that I that I get excited for when I'm doing MMOs. And this is called uh, Miro.com, courtesy of Mighty Gamer Dad. He's the one that uh, introduced me to it. It's a really cool program. I have all sorts of stuff in here. So this is what I'm using to plan out my videos, uh, my content. Um, uh, just if I'm if I'm trying to have a discussion about something and I know what I'm think, what I have a feeling or like what I what I think, but I don't know how to word what I'm thinking. This is a great way to do it. So. Like I said, the first thing that I think we should do is explore the social aspect of it. Okay. So. I don't know what that is, but we're going to get rid of that. I think that most MMOs should have a solo play component because sometimes it takes a while to get groups together to go push whatever content you're trying to push. And you don't always have time to do that, but you can go farm material, you can go do whatever, but the solo play is not the focus of the game. So this is where I think that in my head, there's a difference between an MMORPG and an MMO, in my opinion, in my personal opinion. MMO is short for MMORPG, and I will use the words interchangeably, but when you get down to the nitty gritty, I personally think that there's a difference between an MMO and an MMORPG. So I think that an MMO, I would I would honestly label BD, BDO more of an MMO because it promotes a lot of solo play. I mean, there are group plays that are that are important, so like for PvP and stuff like that. But personally, just from my experience in it and what I've looked like, um, or what I've looked at rather, BDO Black Desert Online doesn't really seem to be an MMORPG. It's not a, it's not a massively multiplayer. It's a massive open world game with the option of multiplayer. In my personal opinion. So that being said, I think that there are solo play aspects to an MMORPG, but that's not the focus of the MMORPG. There, it's important to be able to play on your own if you want to play on your own and get through most content. But I think a lot of modern day MMORPGs have gone to the system where they're trying to make it that you don't have to because people don't have time. And that's 100% okay. But, uh,. <clears throat> I, I wouldn't necessarily even call a lot of the MMOs coming out today MMORPGs. They're MMOs. You're always online. You're always doing stuff. But a lot of them even have like to the point where zones are instanced to yourself, which is odd, right? For an MMO, that's odd. So it promotes social socialization and grouping. We're going to go on that train of thought, then we'll look at the solo play aspect. So with socialization and grouping, what that means is there are things like harder content. So that being. Um, groups, raids, uh, duo missions, quests. Uh, trio missions, quests. So when you're picking up the quests and missions, it'll, you know, recommended players three, and it'll be a challenge for three players or darn near impossible with one, unless you're over geared or over leveled. So 
So I think that that's an important part of it because it kind of draws people together and not forces them to play together, but essentially forces them to play together, which, um, again, I don't necessarily think it's required to play with other people, but I think that it's important. Would you consider all video games RPGs since you are indeed playing a role, whether it being a created character or written? Not necessarily. So when I think of RPG, I'm thinking you're playing a role in the game. So you're playing, you're taking over your, your exactly activities that encourage group play. I think that that's, that's an important aspect of MMOs and what makes it a massively multiplayer online role-playing game. Um, but with role-playing games, I think that it's typically more, you're taking on the role and the goals of a specific character. So Like if you're playing, I'm trying to remember the character's name in, uh, that you play in, um, uh, in, um, uh, uh, oh, Geralt of Rivera. What, what the heck is that game? Why can't I think of it? The Witcher. When you like, you're taking over his goals, his aspirations of what he's trying to get done. Whereas if you're playing a game like Call of Duty. Um, I mean, granted, there's a storyline, and the storyline, I would say, has RPG, is an RPG. You are taking over the goals of the character that you're playing in the storyline of Call of Duty. But once you get into multiplayer and Warzone, it's not an RPG at that point. It's a, it's a shooter. It's a first-person shooter. Um, while I would say the solo campaign is more of like an FPS RPG, because you are taking the role of the character. You're in-depth, in his mind, trying to finish the objectives you're trying to finish as that person. I think that that's what defines an RPG as opposed to some of the other genres. Like Outriders is definitely an RPG. You're taking over the, the character that you create. There's a story that's written for that character focused on that character. Exactly, exactly Mad Max. So as you're moving through it, not necessarily even just FPS. I mean, cause you also have like, um, Uh, and typically you do California typically you do um so in an RPG you're also going to have character progression whether you're, you're customizing your character when you start it off or you're customizing a skill tree or a crafting tree or you have some sort of option that you can take to differentiate your character from how from where he started to where he ended that's 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 the main bare bones of an RPG. So you take on the role of the character and there's quote unquote character progression. That's RPGs in a nutshell, in my opinion. Yep. My Diet Coke is gone, chat. So in an MMORPG, it's it's similar thing. So you're not necessarily most MMOs have or most MMORPGs have a storyline that you're following. Sometimes it's kind of uh, you can follow the storyline if you want to, or you can go off on a different path, which is cool. Um, because sometimes, I mean, a lot of these MMORPGs, once you play through the storyline once, there's not a lot of change that can happen in the game itself. So playing through a whole storyline a second time can be a little monotonous. But when you're leveling like an alt is what they're called, an alternate character. Um, you know, it's like me. I play a tank. Any game I play, I usually have a sword and a shield in my hand when I'm playing it or whatever um, system that character or that specific job type uses for defense or weapons. But I mean, when you're thinking overall general thought, think heavy plate armor, sword, shield. That's that's what I usually play. Um, there's also the damage dealers. So your your damage per second, the DPS. Um, and that's more of like uh, Aragon from Lord of the Rings is, is one, one possible uh, option. So you're thinking physical DPS, physical damage per second. So you have your bow and arrow, you have your sword, you have your daggers, you have shurikens, you have throwing weapons, whatever whatever it be. Um, then you also have your Gandalf, you have your casters, you have your 
the people that are back there launching huge fireballs or cursing their enemies or whatever witch doctors um or shamans rather not witch doctors but there, there's a couple different aspects to those roles and i think with rpgs and mmorpgs this one i'll say kind of falls and falls in line with each other there's there's usually different um character progressions that you can go through so you know if i'm playing for instance i'm playing outriders right now very good rpg i'm playing a devastator my character is beefy as heck uh most bosses i've come up to so far i can go blow for blow i can sit well maybe not blow for blow but like the mini bosses not the not the big big bosses but i can sit there right in front of them and i have enough heals per second and enough defense that i can just not even worry about cover as long as they're the only enemy and trade blows back and forth and not have a problem. But if I had gone a different path, I might do a little more damage, but not necessarily be um, as defensive. So I won't take be able to take as much damage before I die. Right, Mad Max, I get you. That's kind of like a fine tuning, right? Sort of, kind of. We'll never understand RPGs or MMOs. Simply, Callie, I think that you have the mind that if you if you decided that you wanted to try it and actually dive dive into one, that you could probably understand it if you took time to. But back to the socialization that we were talking about. So we have the harder content, the groups, the raids, the duo missions and quests, and trio missions and quests. Aside of that, you usually also have some sort of emote. So. Final Fantasy 14, for instance. Actually, I can show you a good, good, um, um, example of that. And guys, I'm sorry, my brain is still sort of fried. My memory and words are not working. Okay, so what we're looking at here is my video I did on friends, making friends and MMOs. That's Espresso Joe, by the way, if you're in here, Espresso, hello. But when I'm, when I was playing with them, I had my emotes. So your slash wave, your slash high, whatever. And see like he just waved at me. So I type back slash wave. You had your emotes. It makes it a little more involved. You know, I cheered that he found me. It's, it, you, you may, it's, it makes it a little more I don't want to say personal because it's still just a video game, but it makes it a little more uh, like how you would actually react in real life. So when I when I see him, um, you know, I'm like, hey, how's it going? That's, that's what I would do in real life. So there's there's that aspect to it. The emotes or the the interaction between characters outside of just normal typing out and saying hello which I think is fun. And again, that's one of those things that I think makes emotes or uh, makes MMORPGs just a little bit better or a little bit more social as opposed to some of the other games where you, where you'll see each other and there aren't necessarily those emotes. I'm not sure it's a requirement for an MMORPG, but it definitely just adds to that social interaction aspect. Um, the other part of it so we have the harder content the groups the raids so any content where you're going to have to actively try to find a group to play with or at least join into some sort of looking for group or looking for raid or dungeon finder or whatever or just other people in the zone most most mmos in each area that you're in there's going to be some sort of like a general chat or an out of character chat so uh one where if you're trying, if you get some cool loot and you want to trade it off, you can, you know, uh, talk to the whole zone that you're in. Hey, I have this item. I'm looking for this, or I'm looking for this much gold or, or coins or whatever. Um, but that's, that's another, another part. Whoop. Yeah. 
so there's there's ways to communicate built into the game ways to communicate with other players outside of requiring that you have a headphone headphone and microphone so every mmo i've ever played every mmorpg i've ever played has had chat channels so whether it's group chat party chat uh zone chat trade chat there's usually a whole ecosystem that uh, that uh, lives in that chat channel so some games you might have the typical players so the people that are that are out there pushing the content trying to group up and play with other players and then a lot of them you'll have people that are what i call just auctioneers they're people that uh buy and trade and sell loot stuff for your character whether it be potions gear uh runes and glyphs if the game has it in it things like that um i think crafting in mmos is a lot of times its own little mini game or its own not even necessarily mini game its own game i used to play a game called star wars galaxies where the 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 uh gear that everybody used whether it was in game or beginning game was all player made it's all player based so it was a player based economy is what they call that <laughs> have you ever heard of a music group called cellophane they mostly rap <laughs> those are the kind of jokes i live for thank you so much for that tim <laughs> thank you for the lurk corroded oh god that's perfect oh i'm gonna have to use that I'm gonna have to use the deer man. Are you here? Are you still here? That's a joke you can get behind. I think I love dad jokes. They're so perfect. Tim. Thank you so much <laughs> Did you see that joke? Have you ever heard of a music group called cellophane? They mostly rap. Did you see that? <laughs> good that's good but so yeah most mmos are gonna have multiple chat channels and there are usually people that live in those chat channels uh for instance world of warcraft classic there's a lady in one of the role-playing servers or it may not even be a lady but uh they call themselves granny and they hang out in the baron's chat and they tell stories like nine o'clock every friday or something along those lines i don't remember exactly but that's just one example of um you know it, it's it's another social aspect she actually has people that come and hang out just to just to listen to her stories and they're just completely made up things but you don't see that in other games but in mmos there's all sorts of just crazy fun weird stuff that happens like that dude i'm sorry i went to a seafood disco last week and pulled a muscle <laughs> Tim, I'm going to need you just to come hang out every morning and then give these jokes out. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. <clears throat> but so I think that overall an MMO is going to promote the socialization and grouping aspect of what the game provides. So they're going to have some content that's going to be behind that socialization wall um whether it be raids or whatever i think wow did a great job of it where uh even for the casual player they still have access to the content of the raids so they can still go through and do the raids granted it's kind of a weird situation because they may not be able to enjoy the lore fully and all that because the raid group is comprised of people that are just there for the well maybe not all just there for the gear but there's a lot of people that are just there to get the gear and get out so they're not listening to the to the you know cutscenes or the chat interaction between the npcs on screen or whatever but i think world of warcraft's on the right path of they're taking that same raid gear that the that the hardcore players would be doing so the people that are setting time aside say you know six o'clock to ten o'clock every wednesday and friday and maybe saturday or sunday or something um to go push this full-fledged content and really try to get the best character they can possibly build etc etc but wow 
took that a step farther and took those those battles and those fights made them a little bit simpler and then put them into a looking for raid um uh where you just press a button it automatically brings together a group for the raid puts them into the end of the raid and allows casual players or players that don't have as much time to still push the the content and make sure that they get to experience all the content it's just a little bit easier so they don't have to have all the all the gear that requires hours of grinding for and all this other stuff so i think wow did a great job with that um there's a lot of people that don't have that opinion but a lot of those people are just the elitists if you will but that's one way to do it to help with the casual gamer. I, I think it was Mad Max mentioned earlier that um, he doesn't have time to just commit to a video game and he starts falling behind. Yep. And I think that, that WoW did a wonderful job of making sure that it's accessible. And then something that I think Final Fantasy 14 does incredibly well for the casual. And, and when I say casual, it's not a negative term, by the way. Um, it, it, when I, when I use it, it's just meaning people that don't have, you know, four hours a day to spend gaming. So Final Fantasy introduced kind of something different. So you're not going to be able to experience all the content that the game has to offer. At least from what I've learned so far. Um, because you won't be able to get into some of those raids if you don't have the gear to get into those raids and the group content and whatever. But they have a whole separate side of their end game the the uh, uh, apparel farming so different outfits different costumes they did a great job with just being able to customize your character to make it look exactly how you want exactly Mad Max um, and I think Final Fantasy did a good job with that they also have like a whole housing system so you can go out and you can get different things for your houses and your guild halls and you know, different furniture, different trophies, different this, that, and the other thing. They did a wonderful job with it. Elder Scrolls Online as well did a great job with it. I mean, they're both very similar end game. You have like two halves of it. You have your hardcore end game raiding and grouping and all this stuff. And then you have your uh, whole different side of it for more geared towards the casual player or the people that play that may just not have any interest in that, that hardcore progression push. Or that end game progression push rather you can go out and you can <laughs> just you know look at furniture and buy furniture and decorate your house like it's really freaking cool and i think that it, it's something that's very important that you know final fantasy 14 and eso the reason that they are still thriving so well i mean wow is obviously thriving as well but it is because their end game is so diverse that you don't have to just do raids or just do grouping content in order to feel like you're su successful at something or to get interest in what you're doing. And it's, it's just really, really cool. Um, so when we're looking at solo play, I think that we're typically looking at farming. So whether that be for materials for crafting, I appreciate that California. <laughs> um, when we're looking at solo play, we're usually looking at farming materials for crafting or, um, you know, whatever you may be farming for. There might be certain, uh, gear that you can get solo that you're just going out and you only have 20 minutes you want to kill this guy twice to see if you can get you know a specific pair of maybe raid entry level boots or whatever um i think that that's 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 really something typically that's done solo there are some items that in some games that you can only get when you're in a group of even for crafting but when I think of solo play, personally, I'm thinking of more going out and mining or going out and collecting herbs or, you know, killing the sprites in whatever zone to loot their elemental cores so you can craft elemental gear or, you know, whatever. That's an ex a very broad example. Um, 
but solo play is typically not the focus of an MMORPG. Um, some games are a little bit different, like Star Wars Galaxies. I don't know if any of y'all remember that. Uh, if you were a crafter and you mained a crafter, you were essentially playing solo most of the time, but you had to rely on other people to get you certain items. Like, again, I'm not going to get super into details, but I was what was called a uh, weaponsmith, so I crafted weapons. Well, some of the weapons that I needed in that game, or that I wanted to craft, if I wanted to craft the best versions of them, I had to work with um, players that were going out and fighting enemies and doing some of that group content to get certain like weapon cores and weapon uh, components that they could only get by looting. And then so it creates still creates that social aspect because you're more running a business at that point. You're worrying about logistics. I need to get this item. I'll pay you this much per item when you bring it to me. Yada, 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 yada. And so even the crafting part doesn't have to be solo. And I don't think it should be a solo a solo adventure you're still having to work with other people to get done what you got to do so it's just if it's an mmorpg it should be it should be a social interaction a social investment so as far as the online goes we'll talk about the grouping content Multiple classes. Exactly, Mad Max. Exactly. Um, so what is an MMO? It's online, which means you have for grouping you have multiple classes you have synergistic roles so that's kind of goes into what uh, one husky gamer was saying earlier you have your not necessarily this defined but you have your tank your healer and your damage per second your dps um they work together for the group content to make sure that the group uh, that the content can be done so you have your tank that's just absorbing all the hits from everybody you have your DPS or your damage per second that's doing all the damage to the enemies. And then you have your healer that's working on just keeping everybody alive. Uh, so Mad Max, there's a game coming out called Ashes of Creation. One of their big systems that they're implementing is actually just that. So as a crafter, I can go up to the board or whatever system that they're going to or that they have integrated. But I can go up to the, the board or the whatever and um, put out that I need, you know, a thousand wood. So I need a thousand wood brought to me and I'll pay this much if you get it to me within this much time. Um, yeah, but I'm not sure if it's going to be like a job board or if they're going to do some kind of like a broker for it or what. So I didn't want to put words in their mouth. But... Uh, basically you'll be able to say as a crafter, I need this. I'll pay you this much. If you bring me this, um, you know, and I, I want it done within this amount of time and people can go accept that, go do the job and you know, bada bing, bada boom, it's done. Um, or there's also apparently going to be like bounty hunting stuff. There's also going to be, um, like logistical product movement. So if you have a bunch of material that you're trying to get from point A to point B, you can get the horse, the wagons, all this other stuff and say, I just need you to protect this from this point to this point, make sure it doesn't die. And they can do basically um, escort missions for you. So there, there's a lot of cool stuff that's coming with it. I haven't looked into it to see if that's still a thing that they're trying to implement, but I know back in the early days, that was definitely, definitely a priority for them. And I hope that it is, cause that sounds freaking awesome. Super excited for it. But so the grouping, multiple classes, synergistic roles, and development within each class. And what I mean by that is um, 
each class is going to have its own way that you can build it and play it so it's not if you're a rogue this other rogue is going to have exactly the same stuff as you and they're going to have to play the character the same way or if you're a warrior tank you know everybody has the same exact abilities that they're using there is no differentiating between between them but development within each class um what i'm getting at is that everybody can make their own character their own they can adjust and move and uh, and uh specialize as they desire so i think that's an important role of mmorpg is not necessarily a required role but it makes it a lot more fun adds to that socialization aspect then the last part of that is that an mmorpg is always online there is no offline play there is no not seeing anybody else um if, if you're playing the game you're online it's that easy that's simple so let me get the music going again because that died off on me there we go um so an MMORPG, massively multiplayer, online, role-playing game, always going to be online. There's not an offline option. There's not a... I mean, some, some of them involve instances and things like that, but there's not an overall overarching... You know, if I go into this zone, I'm not going to see anybody because I'm all on my own. Um, there are missions and stuff that require that, obviously. Think Final Fantasy XIV, but it's not a... It's not an overall thing. So the other side of this is that MMOs need to have constant con uh, content updates. MMOs are typically created for longevity. So if you're going to play an MMO and put in all the time that's required to progress in the MMO, I'll get into that in a little bit here, Mad Max. I'll, I'll hold I'll hold that one in because I think Outriders falls into the same sort of genre. Um. But there's going to be consistent updates to the content in the end game, whether it be expansions, um, free downloadable content, uh, you know, bug fixes, because with MMOs, there's typically so many systems that need to work together that they need to, they need to constantly keep an eye on and keep it updated. What's up, Mr. Hoshoku? How you doing? Sorry about that chat. I didn't mean to burp in your ears. How's Mr. Hoshoku today? Hope you're having a good day. And with the content update and everything, I mean, it's not necessarily regularly scheduled, like not every three months to the day, but they need to give players enough that they can work on and work towards so that they can, they can stay busy and stay interested. And that's, that's one reason that World of Warcraft is so is so popular i mean every two years pretty much on the dot they got a new expansion that comes out every three months typically there's new content that's added to the game whether it's rating content or grouping content or whatever um they have enough outside of rating and grouping like crafting and uh achievements things like that that they they can keep the player base interested long term and they they were kind of the first to crack that formula I mean, EverQuest now is on like a 24th expansion. It's been live since 2001, 1999, one of the two. Um, it's one of those things. It, it's still alive and obviously profitable or the servers wouldn't be up anymore. So they, 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 they also cracked the code. They got it working. But then we've seen a lot of MMOs that have just absolutely died like quickly. Star Wars Galaxies, they didn't listen to their player base and well, they put out a patch and within six months after the patch, the game completely died out and went away. 
uh, because they completely overhauled the whole combat system and a bunch of other stuff. It was kind of a nightmare. That game went from one of my very favorite games to one day after that patch was launched, I shut it off and uninstalled it. Um, and it's just important that they, that they, you know, have those content updates and the progression to consistently keep everybody entertained. And this kind of works into that content update. Um, is the player base input. So they listen to their player base. They allow the player base to have, maybe not have a say, but they at least understand that if there's a bug or something that they'll, they'll have it fixed. Um, so they have some sort of a system where a player can input a ticket and say, this is what's going on. It goes out to the dev team or whatever proxy between them and the dev team. Then it's decided as to whether it's actually an actionable bug fix or if it's the player not understanding how something's supposed to work. Um, a lot of a lot of these MMOs that are out don't do a very good job of listening to that. I think that typically you see a lot more response when you have the subscription-based MMOs. So Final Fantasy XIV, World of Warcraft, um, Elder Scrolls Online has like the subscription option. Um, I think you see a lot quicker fixes with those companies that do provide that subscription because or require that subscription because they, they, you know, they have additional money to hire additional resources, da, 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 da. So I think in a nutshell, all of these items working together is what creates an MMO. It doesn't necessarily have to be a hard fantasy. It doesn't have to be sci-fi. It doesn't have to be, um, anything of that nature. It can be whatever they want it to be. As long as the majority of these elements are involved in it, it is at that point an MMORPG. That's another deterrent to casual players. And that's one of those things, Mad Max, where you got to know what audience you're trying to aim towards. So again, with that paid subscription, you usually see better customer service because they have the resources to have more customer service employees or developers or whatever they can more consistently keep up with everything that they got to do um so it's kind of you got to figure out what your market is and what your audience is and figure out if that's the right path for you to go that's why you see a lot of these games coming out with subs that will suddenly transfer to not not requiring a sub but along with that comes a reduction in uh resources that the people can use so like elder scrolls online for example you can play it without a sub and it's playable. It's still fun, but you're not going to have access to like, um, uh, uh, expanded inventory for your crafting resources, which is huge because you can only hold X amount of items in elder scrolls online. But if you have that subscription, it adds an extra infinite amount of slots for crafting stuff. So you don't have to worry about, okay, well, I want to play, I want to go out and do this dungeon, but I have all this, you know, or that's hanging out in my inventory. I need to go to the bank first and get rid of it. So while I, I definitely understand it's a deterrent to a lot of people, it's if it's a deterrent to them, that's probably not their audience that they're aiming for. As far as um, allocating the resources to manage it. Again, that's why you see games like Elder Scrolls Online still popular. Because they do also cater to the more casual or the person that is strictly casual, casually playing. Um, you can still play it. You can still do what you need to do. You're just not going to have all the bells and whistles. It's still going to be a fully playable game, though. It's just not going to have some of that ease of life stuff added in. So does anybody disagree with anything that I put on this list? Um, they have like what they're calling a trial. So you can play it up to level 60 and decide if you like it. And then from there, it does require that subscription. 
Uh, let me go potty really quick, chat. While I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and play my most recent short that I put out. And I will be right back. B R B. Overpower, get some of that enmity out there. And we start sliding through with the single target attacks. Overpower, get some of that enmity out there. And we start sliding through with the single target attacks. Build immunity on everybody, so if the DPS doesn't focus what I'm focusing on, I have a second to recalibrate. That's how we do, how we do. Alright. Look at that. I'm gonna pull the next. Got the overpowers out. We are good. Now we're gonna start doing that little cycle right through all the enemy, or all the. Other mobs. And that's how you hold aggro on multiple targets, chat. And that goes for pretty much every MMO. All right. So, like I said, this is pretty much what I think, what, and a lot of this is subject to my opinion, what I think an MMORPG is. It's, it's a social, a game that promotes social interaction and grouping. It's a game that has solo play, but that's not the focus. It's a game that is online, strictly online. It's always online. There is the grouping that we talked about with, with the socialization, but outside of that, there are different uh, actions you can take within your selected job or your selected class that allows you to differentiate from everybody else. And then um, there's constant, consistent content updates and progression. So there is an end game progression. There is a, um, you know, every couple months, some new update that provides some kind of content to keep the player base entertained. And they also listen to the player base input as far as bugs, ideas for future patches, future content. I think that that is probably the five most important parts of any MMO. And they need to have the majority of those or all of them to be considered an MMORPG. So, Mad Max, you asked earlier about Destiny. I think Destiny is what I would deem a looter shooter with MMO aspects. Again, that's why you see games like Elder Scrolls Online still popular. Because they do also cater to the more casual or the person that is strictly casual, casually playing. Um, you can still play it. You can still do what you need to do. You're just not going to have all the bells and whistles. It's still going to be a fully playable game, though. It's just not going to have some of that ease of life stuff added in. So does anybody disagree with anything that I put on this list? So, like I said, this is pretty much what I think, What and a lot of this is subject to my opinion, what I think an MMORPG is. It's, it's a social... A game that promotes social interaction and grouping. It's a game that has solo play, but that's not the focus. It's a game that is online, strictly online. It's always online. There is the grouping that we talked about with, with the socialization, but outside of that, there are different uh, actions you can take within your selected job or your selected class 
that allows you to differentiate from everybody else. And then um, there's constant, consistent content updates and progression. So there is an end game progression. There is a, you know, every couple months, some new update that provides some kind of content to keep the player base entertained. And they also listen to the player base input as far as bugs, ideas for future patches, future content. I think that that is probably the five most important parts of any MMO and they need to have the majority of those or all of them to be considered an MMORPG. If you're liking the MMO content, specifically Final Fantasy XIV, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications. We are going to be streaming on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 10 a.m., as well as 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Um, and then we'll be live Saturday, 8 a.m. to noon. Um, Final Fantasy XIV for the foreseeable future. July 30th, we're going to be adding New World into that. Thank you for watching the video. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions.